This is part two of a lecture on viruses um, from March 27th, 2020, talking about the replication of different types of viral genomes. And so what we're going to talk about in this lecture is basically simple multiplication strategy or the most basic molecular mechanism for how different types of viruses replicate their genome in the synthesis stage of their life cycle. So there are many different types of viruses and they're grouped and identified according to the Baltimore system based on what their genomes are made of. And so there are several types of viruses that use DNA as the nucleic acid for their genome. Um, some use double-stranded DNA, others use single-stranded. And then there are quite a few viruses that use RNA to encode their genome. Um, some use double-stranded RNA. However, more use single-stranded RNA to encode their genome. Um, and some use what's called plus-stranded mRNA, which is RNA that would be identical to the mRNA this virus would produce. Some of the single-stranded RNA viruses use minus-strand RNA to encode their genome. And minus-strand RNA is just complementary to the mRNA the virus would produce. And some single-stranded viruses are what's known as retroviruses that have their single-stranded RNA first trans, uh, transcribed into double-stranded DNA um, before it can be replicated. And we're going to go into some detail about each of these individual types of viruses and how these viral genomes are replicated during synthesis. And so we're going to start with the DNA viruses. And so a double-stranded DNA virus, um, such as the herpes virus or human papillomavirus, has a very similar method of replication uh, to eukaryotic genomes, because eukaryotic genomes are also made of double-stranded DNA. And so a double-stranded DNA virus can use DNA polymerase to replicate its double-stranded DNA genome for insertion into the virion, and it can also transcribe mRNA using a DNA-dependent RNA polymerase, and that mRNA can be translated into viral proteins that make up this capsid structure and ultimately part of that virion particle. And so DS double-stranded DNA viruses are sort of the most straightforward to understand in the way that we typically think about um, replication of a genome, at least in terms of our cells and eukaryotic cells. There are also some viruses that exist with a single-stranded DNA genome, like paroviruses that um, infect both humans and animals. And in the case of single-stranded DNA genomes, they first need to be converted into double-stranded DNA genomes, or what's known as rep replicative forms, forms that can be replicated by a traditional DNA polymerase and transcribed using a DNA-dependent RNA polymerase um, in the same way that's described above for double-stranded DNA viruses. In terms of the RNA viruses, the multiplication is a little bit more complicated. So for a double-stranded RNA virus, like rotavirus, which causes um, a pretty serious diarrheal infection in infants, the double-stranded RNA that the genome exists in first needs to be transcribed into that plus RNA, or RNA that is um, identical to mRNA, encoding viral proteins. And this happens using an enzyme that the virus actually brings with it called an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. And so the RNA polymerase portion is the part that should tell you you're making a piece of RNA. And the RNA-dependent tells you what the template is. So you're using an RNA template to create a new piece of RNA, which can then be translated into viral proteins. And so this RNA-dependent RNA polymerase has two different functions, and when it's transcribing plus or plus strand RNA, it has, it's using its transcriptase function. And so some of that plus strand RNA, like I said, is translated into viral proteins, and some of it is used as a template to regenerate double-stranded RNA or make new double-stranded RNA genomes. 
And this is done using the replicase activity of this same RNA dependent RNA polymerase. So you've got one enzyme that the virus brings with it that can both transcribe or make these small pieces of plus RNA and also replicate the RNA genome. And depending on which of these functions it's doing, it's utilizing two different activities, but it's technically just one enzyme that's doing both of them processes. And so there are several types of single-stranded RNA viruses. Uh, the first that I'm going to talk about is the plus-strand RNA viruses, um, such as polio virus and the SARS-CoV-2, which is causing COVID-19. So um, plus-strand RNA viruses can translate their plus-strand RNA genome directly into proteins. Um, as a reminder, that plus strand is exactly the same sequence as an mRNA. And so as soon as, the, um, as this plus strand RNA genome enters into the host cell, the host cell machinery can start making proteins. And one protein that is made in this way almost instantly upon this viral genome entering into the host cell is that RNA-dependent RNA polymerase which can serve as a replicase to make more plus strand RNA or replicate the genome, and also to make proteins that will ultimately make up the capsid and the other parts of the structure of that virion. So plus strand RNA viruses use eukaryotic machinery to immediately make proteins, and then those proteins in turn can replicate that plus strand RNA genome to make new variants. And this is slightly different from the minus strand RNA viruses, like rabies and influenza virus, because these viruses can't make that RNA dependent polymerase as soon as they enter into the host cell. So they need to bring their own enzyme with them because a minus strand RNA is complementary to an mRNA, but it doesn't actually encode the same protein, right? And so first, this RNA-dependent RNA polymerase needs to convert negative strand RNA into positive strand RNA and mRNA. And some of that mRNA, or positive strand RNA, is used to be translated into proteins to make up the new virion. Some of it is used as a template to regenerate the negative RNA genome. So for minus strand RNA viruses, they bring their own polymerase to the party. They first convert, use that polymerase to convert minus strand RNA to plus strand RNA. And then those plus strand RNAs can be used to make proteins and to regenerate that net minus strand RNA genome to make a new virion particle. And finally, the last RNA virus that we're going to talk about is retroviruses, which I'm sure you're familiar with already. So one of the most common or the most well-studied retroviruses is HIV. HIV has a plus strand RNA genome. And so theoretically, it could start translating proteins right from here, from this plus strand RNA. But it doesn't do that, and nor do any retroviruses. What retroviruses do first, before anything else, is they convert this plus strand RNA into a double-stranded DNA. And they use a specific enzyme called reverse transcriptase that they also bring with them to the party. So, um, a, plus, a retrovirus will bring this plus strand RNA genome, it'll bring the reverse transcriptase, and it will convert this plus strand RNA genome into a double-stranded DNA genome. And then what's nice about this for the retrovirus is that the double-stranded DNA can integrate into the genome of the host cell, whether it's a bacteria, which has double-stranded DNA genome, whether it's a human cell, which also has a double-stranded DNA genome, now this viral DNA can integrate straight into that and can be made into mRNA um, and proteins, as well as RNA that can recreate its own genome using the host cell's machinery. 
And one advantage to this is that the viral genome can stay integrated in the host cell, and every time the host cell replicates, it can also replicate the viral genome as well.